Emoluments Clause. Emoluments Clause explained. Emoluments Clause pronunciation. These are the trending topics, folks. The pronunciation of Emoluments Clause is Emoluments Clause. There you go, Emoluments Clause. The Emoluments Clause explained. We'll get to that. Emoluments Clause is in the story today because, of course, Donnie, Donald, Donald J., Trump and all of his subtlety and, and wisdom and uh, constitutional uh, alacrity uh, has decided to say this. I don't think uh, you people with this phony emoluments clause, and by the way, uh, I would say that it's cost me anywhere from two to five billion dollars to be president, and that's okay. There you go, phony emoluments clause. Now, from phony emoluments clause, we get a story like this. We get... Well, let's just see first off. Just look in here and see all the story there. CNN analyst explains emoluments clause to Trump. <gasps> she explains why the emoluments clause is part of the Constitution after President Donald Trump called it phony. Yeah, yeah, you're literally doing that because you're pushing a narrative. The narrative is that Donald Trump is an idiot. And Donald Trump, you know, Mr. You know, all the the conservatives says, you know, he's going to defend the Constitution. I'm like, look, look, man, he doesn't even know what... uh what the emoluments clause is, because he said it was phony. It doesn't even exist. Okay, that's the narrative. That's the narrative CNN is putting out there. Emoluments clause. Donald Trump has said the emoluments clause is phony. Now, I think that's a lot of BS, and I think anybody who listened to this thing, e even what he said there, it's, it's kind of what he's saying is it's clear. Emoluments clause, phony emoluments clause is a statement that's not saying that the emoluments clause is phony. Even though, you know, literally that's what it says. You understand the context, especially building up. What he's saying is that the emoluments clause does not have the interpretation that you people are saying it does, that Donald Trump believes that his idea to have the G7 hosted at Doral is not a violation of the Emoluments Clause. Not that the Emoluments Clause doesn't exist, you morons. And you know this. The news outlets know this. The people who are, who are writing these stories, the people somewhere in CNBC, some idiot decided to put this in the front of the freaking video this is a person who has decided i'm not going to serve the public i'm not actually going to serve them with a product well actually maybe they are they're serving they're not serving the public they're serving the partisans they're serving the the basically the democratic party and its coalition the news that they well they don't want news they want the daily affirmations that their side is the morally correct one and Trump's side is the morally evil one and so they begin this video by putting this little quote here that says President Trump railed on the quote phony emoluments clause unquote amid scrap plans to host the G7 at his resort that's that's not what happened but before we get to Donald's full context here Let's, let's, let's just look here. I highlighted this part. You hear, see this? This is from Wikipedia. You, you love Wikipedia. You say it all the time. Uh, so it's, 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 it's a source of authority. The clause is subject to interpretation. Interpretation. Yeah. No title of nobility shall be granted to by the United States, and no person holding any under them shall, without the consent of Congress, except of a, except of any president, any kind whatsoever, from any king, prince, or foreign. You that uh, Donald Trump having a business, his business. The business of the government is a violation of the emoluments clause, which it might be. It might be. I think that there's some room for our I think that you could pretty easily interpret this to mean that uh, holding a mass economic forum 
at your place of business is, uh, I, I think that's a pretty much a no. Being a violation of the Emoluments Clause, the, uh, from any king, prince, or foreign state. Not absolute. I think you can still make an argument that I'm not going to get into the legal specifics. I'm not a lawyer. Be or any other place. I don't even do a lawyer on radio. Dude, I'm that that much not a lawyer. Lawyers can, can pick this thing apart and uh, try to figure out why it is that Trump uh, doing what he did is, or what he almost He's not, well, let me just play him off. But the Democrats went crazy. Even though I would have done it free, saved the country a lot of money. I just want to say, even though you did it for free, we are all not stupid. If you held the whole thing for free, that actually makes it work. Holy moly, you're literally giving them favor political favor to spend money send all their people here and you pedal it there I mean that that actually would make it worse I think then they say oh but you'll get promotion I can't you don't think I get enough promotion I get more promotion <laughs> than any you so this is the listen I got so much promotion that I don't promotion not an argument Donald Human being that's ever lived, I think I get. I think I would. Have wow, that's a surprise, Donald. You know, the greatest something or other human being or president or something. I think I can say that fairly safely. I think I get more promotion than any human being that's ever lived. Is that Chairman Z probably has you beat hands down? I think Chairman Z probably. Does. Z. Some good, some bad. But he has like 1.3 billion promoters, so he totally has to beat Donnie to his 1.3 billion. Uh, the people that like me give me only good. The people that don't like me give me only bad. But that's the way life is. I don't need promotion. <coughs> I don't need promotion. Okay. So what's saying there, I mean, he's making the argument. He's setting up the argument. This isn't this is an emolument. So I'm not I'm not getting I'm not saying the argument is sound. I'm just saying he's that's what he's arguing. Okay. But I was willing to do this for free. And they would it would have been the greatest G seven ever. I can't believe that some but something that he touched he imagined might be the greatest of all time. Weird. And I would have said to my family because they run my business now. I don't run my business. I actually put all the stuff in trusts. They run my, and I didn't have to. Especially in, in light of the Hunter Biden thing, where Joe Biden is saying, uh, or, 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 yeah, well, there's Hunter Biden, there's Joe Biden, and then there's, uh, I just saw something from Jimmy Dory. Hello, oh, Jimmy Dore, I'm sorry, Jimmy Dore. He's a door, he's not a window, he's a door. But he spelled D-O-R-E. Uh, he's, 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 he's one of the few sane progressives that are left. There are sane progressives, so don't lop all progressives in with the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party just, just, basically the power base of the Democrat Party has essentially thrown in with this SJW anti-due process extremism. That's why it's weird seeing uh, a company like C CNBC, which is a, a, a Democratic Party uh, show headquarters. It's, they're a little bit more tempered than the others, but they are, in fact, I mean, by my, my estimation, I'm not saying I have the do documents, by my, my observation, they're, they're pretty much a, a Democratic uh, military operation. All of these, this is not the press. If you want to defend the free press, these are not it. These are not, this is not it, Chief. These are not the droids you're looking for. These people are not repressors. These people are soldiers. They're military soldiers in a military operation. And they are intent on destroying and undermining due process. Even the idiots that don't understand this. The, the, the CNBC capitalist shills that don't under... Oh, well, I say that, you know, flippantly. I don't really like that term. Stupid. But, you know, the capitalist shills that uh, they're, they're still 
pushing and advocating for an ideology underneath it all. Uh, this this SJWism it's kind of like SJWism like Christianity SJWism as a as a consensual practice amongst fellow believers is fine no problem when you when you put guns behind it when you attach it to guns when you attack it to market assassinators and government assassinators you know metaphorically or whatever otherwise that's when it becomes like the Christianity in the Middle Ages where popes were having people executed for saying that uh, uh, people should be able to uh, interpret scriptures on their own without the government imposing it upon them. You know, that'll get you killed. By the way, that's kind of what's going on now. The uh, the media is work. That's why the media is signing, siding with SJWs, because they'll, they'll get more money in an SJW universe, and they won't have to be held accountable for their shrilleries, but the, I, 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 it would take me a long time to explain why I made that statement. I shouldn't have made it. Just, just that part. Donald Trump keeps going. I to do that, but under no obligation to do it. You know, I don't know if you know it, George Washington. He ran his business simultaneously while he was president. Many other presidents. There weren't too many. Really see, see, see. That's what he's doing. What, what he's saying is, listen, man. This emoluments clause, it's, 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 he's saying that the interpretation that presidents can't do business while they're in office is phony. This is the phony part that he's saying. And everybody knows this, but we're not going to have an intelligent conversation about this. We're not going to have a nuanced conversation where we analyze the insanity of what Donald Trump did. And, it, and, and I'm going to say it's insane. It's an insane defense to actually believe that somehow you believe that having all these world leaders come in for free, that makes it worse, into your resort, that somehow that does not have the appearance of impropriety and quite possibly a violation of this quote-unquote emollient's clause. And I say quite possibly, because by, you know, basically what it comes down to is how many lawyers, how many judges do you have that are on your side? Because if he has enough judges on his side, they can find a way to interpret that morale is not a violation. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. Because that's the reality of power. Uh, rule of law and due process are great ideational, uh, well, I'll say, in terms of for we poors, we people who do not have access to the means of violence resources in the land uh, reliably and consistently and uh, with uh, public approval, uh, we poors, um, yeah. We, we very much need to have the, the, the ideational power of due process and rule of law because without that, you end up with England and Canada. You end up with cops. Uh, I'm going to repeat this just because this to me is the height of it all. When you have cops knocking on people's doors because they liked uh, uh, an anti-trans comment on Facebook, that's what you get. That's what you get when you lose due process. And that is what people are working on now cutting out due process and attaching it mostly to people's feels, how they feel about you, how they feel about what they think their intent is. That is the most important thing. And that, that's chaos. That's, that's death. So Donald Trump, idiot, total idiot troll. Yet the response, it's not going to really expose Donald Trump. It exposes you media. It makes you look like idiots to the people that if you're trying to reach, maybe you're not even trying. Maybe you're just, all you're really trying to do is keep your base whipped up and organized and ready to kill for you. Ready to dehumanize someone in your name. That's might be what you're doing. And if so, hey, this is effective. This is effective to keep, here it is, Donald. You're not going to reach Republicans with this because, and see, the thing is, anybody with half a brain, anybody reasonably, uh, based in common sense, anybody who is not totally thrown in with the shrilleries of this partisan or that partisan and committed to that faction, no matter what, anybody who looks at this can see. Donald Trump is not saying that the Emoluments Clause doesn't exist, and that's the implication. Somehow he's denying the Emoluments Clause when it's very, very clear that he is denying the application of the emoluments clause in the way that you people say it should be applied. And that conversation is not going to happen because the Republicans that see this, since uh, anybody with common sense can see just what a piece of human garbage filth the media is being and how they're putting this out there, how they're 
basically neglecting their duty as a free press, as a fourth estate, as someone that checks government. You don't check partisans. You don't check politics. Or, or excuse me, you don't check political parties. You check government across the board, across the board, and you do it with facts such as you have them and you don't contextualize you don't have truth you don't fill your your so-called neutral stories with 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 emotional buzzwords that subtly point your audience in the direction that you want them to build in other words you're not there to spread a narrative you're there to let your audience see what's going on i mean this is the idea of a press of, of what would be useful to the pores. What would be useful to the pores is to have a press that holds government across the board accountable with facts, figures, logic, reason, all these things, not with emotional spreading of narratives where you, you twist words and meanings and half-truths or, or just openly lie because they do that all the time as well. And yet, on the same hand, on the other side, as 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 we pours look around and we see the SJWs, the SJWs, actually, I mean, more of those so the Republicans, at least the SJWs are promising. I mean, they're lying, whether they're lying to themselves or not, it's another matter. But at least they're promising to lift up the pores. Well, not the white pores, just. The, but I don't know if they consider white people poor, even if they are poor. I think you can't be poor and white. I think that's the deal. But we look and we're like, holy crap, we got to do something to stop the SJWs, man. They're freaking Nazis. They're fascists. Uh, I don't know if you can call them Nazis. I do sometimes just because they tick me off. But you're certainly fascistic. You're certainly highly authoritarian, tyrannical, anti-due process, anti-rule of law. You are for the subjective interpretation of feels and values which are, are framed within a hierarchy of of Aryans and Jews. And you have a whole list of Aryans at the top, a whole list of Jews at the bottom. And, you know, you get higher up in the Aryan list and lower in the Jew list. That's that's kind of who they are. And yet, what we have is Donald J. Trump with a straight face trying to convince you. I'm not saying that he doesn't have a case, but his case is really small and really uh, just like the democrats what it takes what it would take for a judge to not interpret the emoluments clause to prevent donald trump from doing something so idiotic would be rabid partisan factionalists who will do anything they can to interpret the meaning in their favor and that's that's what the media is doing they're not even media they're not news they're not the free press, they are a military operation, and this just proves it. But yet, who do we have to stand up to them? This guy. This is the only guy that has any real power in America to stand up to them. And that is, it's scary for we poors. Because Donald J. Trump, I'm going to assure you poors, me poors, we poors. Donald's not on your side.